Join us tonight as we review The Invitation. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming, video on demand, and now theatrical horror films. Each week, my co-host, Brian W. Smith and Christopher G. Moore, I'm going to have to put an initial in between my name, will be joining me to review. No, You're not as cool as us. I'm not, not as cool very as us. spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings uh, with me this week is my co-host, Christopher G. Moore. How are you doing, sir? Um, am I <laughs> late for the party? I got an invitation. Uh, okay. <laughs> Where did I I'm see just that kidding. I never get invited awesome. to parties. Oh man! And let's also welcome uh, screenwriter and uh, the uh, one of the what? What do we call you for the New York City Horror Film Judges. Festival? Judges? Uh, yeah, I'm one of the I'm on the film committee, selection committee, and uh, head of the screenplay competition. So. There you go. That, that, you said that far better than I ever will. <laughs> Not ever could, but ever will. So thank you. So well, much. I think we know from experience. Uh, you, you stumble on a few words every. I can, I can yeah, I can stumble on the alphabet. All right, we are here to talk about the invitation, which was at number one at the box office with a whopping seven million. It, it was oh. a, it was a slow weekend. Box, in office the box office is back, baby. But it was number one, baby. It would never happen. <laughs> uh, the invitation. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give you our first impression. That will be spoiler free, and then we're going to dive in discussion, and we will get in the spoilers because this, yeah, we gotta spoil this movie, and then we're going to wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. Uh, of course, we hope you enjoy not only this review but many others that we have on the site. And if you would please hit the subscribe, the like, or share with a friend, and help us reach our goal of five thousand subscribers on YouTube. Thank you. That would be wonderful. And of course, we'd love to see, hear your comments, uh, read your comments, see them, hear them, whatever you can do in the comment section down below, especially if you actually saw this movie. <laughs> we want to know. All right, let's dive into the card and get things going. Uh, the Invitation from uh, Screen Gems or Sony, available in theaters beginning August 26, 2022. Synopsis says, a young woman is courted and swept off her feet only to realize gothic, consp gothic conspiracy is afoot. I love that. Uh, directed by Jessica M. Thompson, written by Blair Butler. Uh, the cast includes Natalie Emanuel as Evie, Thomas Doherty as Walter, Stephanie Corneliuson as Victoria, Alana Bowden as Lucy, Sean Pertwee as Mr. Fields, and Hugh Skinner as Oliver. A, a, a pretty decent cast. Now let's find out if it's a decent movie. Brian W. Smith, start us off. What is your first impression? Your of the invitation i was going to go into something other spiel so go ahead <laughs> uh well i mean i was probably going to see it eventually at some point but i i had to see it in emergency for this review of course emergency. But, uh, <laughs> uh it was it was actually much more tolerable than i expected it to be even though the trailer kind of gives away everything uh, not everything but it gives away enough to know kind of where it's headed oh. um but I, I liked the uh, the main actress, uh, Natalie Emanuel. Uh, I, I thought her performance was really good. I thought the, the character, I thought they gave her enough agency and enough inner strength to sort of, uh, you know, help carry the film along and carry her character around among the, the other characters. And I thought, um, yeah, I mean, there were some revelations that occur in the film. It's like, oh, okay, it's this movie and it's, you know, it's these characters and that that's where they're going. And it was, it was fine. It got a little... A little cheesy towards the end and uh you know as, as with most movies there's always a an end end and uh that was probably why i was like eh, you know but otherwise it, it i thought it was was you know could have been worse not bad uh it, it was it was tolerable they can they can quote me they can quote john it was tolerable <laughs> uh yeah the the actress is uh probably best known from game of thrones or uh fast and furious films fast and furious yeah yeah. yeah yeah uh yeah, they, gave her, they definitely gave her more to do here i mean she's yeah they definitely gave her more to do here in than the fast and furious movie yeah. I think and i'd like to like, i'd like I to see her in more lead roles i think she does a great job but we'll get into that here I later let's find, out, his head there. let's find out about christopher g morse or what was your first impression of the invitation previously known as the bride 
AKA Evie the Vampire Marrier. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like this one. It was a WB Young Adult series. Oh, uh, it, yeah. This film is confounding. This film frustrated me. It annoyed me. It bored me. Uh, and it just seemed like, oh, we want to do something cool with like the vampire type myth or whatever. But it doesn't do any of it well. I didn't like the main actress in this. She, she's oh, she's better man. in other things. I found her to be very monotone. I found, and I don't, I did yeah, in the very beginning, maybe she has a little bit of attitude and agency about things, but halfway through, she just she's just crying and hiding under beds and not doing anything. <laughs> There's even one point she where she does, <laughs> all she has to do is be knocked out and people die. They're, they're really. And then there's, you know, and I just found it to be very annoying uh, to where she, she, she ended up as the, I guess the main protagonist, she ended up being a damsel, sort of a distressed damsel for like 50% of the movie. And it, it was just annoying and clueless. I don't know how many times if you're in a crazy situation, she sits there and asks questions, doesn't move. But what, what about this? What about that? Get the hell out of there. <laughs> don't be asking questions. I don't know. This film, I, I, I'm, I, I was steaming mad because I had to go to a different theater other than my Alamo draft house. And maybe I'm spoiled uh, to see this film. I had to come out of my comfort zone. And I, and there's, there's cinematography that doesn't make any sense. There's a scene where she meets this guy in, in this, this uh, cafe or whatever, and it's shot so weirdly. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, artistically, in some ways it could be cool, but it doesn't make any sense. You shoot things for a certain reason, and this one's like, oh, we just want to shoot really cool shots that don't make a lot of sense for what's happening. And they're shot very oddly. They don't make a lot of sense when it comes to editing or filmmaking. Uh, and then there's some of the choreography is horrible. Um, it, it, I'd rather watch YouTube videos of people fake fighting. Oh. Um, I, 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 and then there's like, they try to do all these filters and stuff during certain parts. Um, and then they try to be all kind of witty and we throw certain character names out there. Like, Ooh, I've read Bram Stoker. So I'm going to throw these character names in there. Cause mm, I'm cool. I don't know. Nice. This, this film I don't want to be invited to this, <laughs> whatever this was ever again. Uh, I want to be disinvited. I, I, yeah, I just, this, this, you know, Brian saw this as being tolerable. I felt this to be intolerable. Intolerable. Oh, I, I, I did not, I did not enjoy much of this. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think the trailer made it, made me intrigued to see it. But after seeing it, I enjoy the trailer more. No, I enjoy the trailer more. Yeah, it's movies like this is why Christopher gets me coal for Christmas every year. Because uh, I, I make him go see these movies. <laughs> uh, I, I I enjoyed this movie far more than both of you. Uh, it's not a good movie. And I enjoyed it more for what it wanted to be than what it is, which I don't think is fair to say that I enjoyed it. But I did enjoy the lead actress. I thought she was good. And I like Thomas Doherty, too, as, as our... Walter character or, or Dracula character, if you will. I, he he gave me Udu Kier vibes. I don't know if anybody else saw that, you know, his very European look. Um, and I I enjoyed the scenes with the two of them together, which is a, a good portion of it. And um, and I, 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 I ironically, I enjoyed the cinematography there, especially the gothic part of it. I guess. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about in the States before they get there when Oliver shows up. But later when they get to the, the actual house, the Carfax Abbey New or whatever they call it, <laughs> um, which is like, like no, not subtle at all. But the it, I was like, man, this this is kind of what, you know, the look and feel was kind of like, this is what Hammer needs to be doing. A Hammer film needs to be doing this at some point, right? Mm -hmm. At least the, 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 uh, the set for the Carfax Abbey. But it 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 loses its own identity along the way it wants to be far more it implies far more violence and gore than it gives us and that's disappointing so it it really drops the ball but at the same time i 
for me, there was chemistry between our two leads and I was enjoying the seduction part of it that he was doing with her. I thought she was, you know, I, I get why she was falling for it. And I, and that may not be fair either, but, um, but yeah, it kind of, it's kind of defanged. It doesn't have what it, what it needs. It's, it. I can't recommend this film, but at the same time, for some stupid reason, I had a good time with it. Also the, the the vampire attacks are just so like horribly shot. Um, yeah, also, so we're, we're going to get into the spoiler. So if you're okay, watching, okay. we're getting. I, that's so what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not trying you're to. You're not going to lose anything. Although I will say, I think something that they they also could have called this Alfred Pennyworth's real. Yes, Batman. yes. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, there, there wow, was they have the guy there. who plays Pennyworth playing a butler. For, for a, a man who turns into a bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you I, know, I, like, didn't make, I didn't make that connection, but you're absolutely <laughs> right. Oh my God, you've ruined it now. You're I didn't for for PG thirteen. I mean, you know, there's always that risk of like something feeling choppy and and you know disjointed and that sort of thing. I thought they they stretched the PG thirteen in terms of like the some of the tense scenes. I, I mean, those poor those poor housekeepers, um, the, mm. the poor maids that they hired. Uh, you know, I, One, I two, like three, the, four, and five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the prolonged like sort of suspense scenes, even though you know you don't necessarily see anything happening. But I thought the tension was at least there. I wasn't expecting that. So it was, it was nice when it happened. Uh, if it was just gonna, it was, if it, I heard that there was like focusing on the romance and that sort of thing. I, I like the balance. So I, I thought some of the, the scare moments were fine for, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like a prom night where it was just like completely anemic or, you know, prom night remake. Oh God. Is, you're like, <laughs> just, you know, you have, stabbings, where you have stabbings or attacks and there's literally no blood. I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, this, this yeah. at least was like, if they, I doubt that they even had, had it set up to show any blood. So it was just sort of like, you know, they prolonged the tension. I watched yeah. the unrated version of Prom Night and it, it's still blood. It's worse. Um, yeah, it was really well, there's, a, there's supposed to be an R rated version of this movie that's going to stream. Oh, okay. I can uh, see I, that. I'm not, I'm not going to no, You're not going to watch it. I might watch it. I might want to see Although it. I will say, I did feel the chemistry between the girl and the guy. I will say that much. I did feel that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some good, I mean, the, I thought, yeah, I thought the attack stuff was just horrible. It's shot really, really badly. Just shot selection and trying to pull off action using editing didn't work. So whoever edited this thing doesn't need to edit this kind of film. There, again. there, there are problems with the editing. Um, although, I mean, there is a very, uh, there was a very tense scene where they involve like people like cutting nails and stuff. Where it's like, mm. I know where this is going, and yeah. I got like, oh god, mm. I don't. <laughs> it's okay, let's. That was pretty so, good. Yeah. So I think that worked for the creating tension because that was tense because like, oh, I know somebody's going to, you know. <laughs> uh, and you could sort of see like how they were trying to get away with like almost showing nudity, but didn't, you know, yep, yep. the girl in, right, the, in yeah. the pool and stuff. Although uh, the whole time I'm like, they have this nice pool inside and there's leaves in it. It's <laughs> just like, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> Um, but oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can understand I mean, the, the whole, I think we, we need more sort of gothic type horror films. So I can understand where you're talking about doc with that. Cause there's a whole, the whole wedding thing and mm -hmm. the production value with like the, the veil, which is like very, almost very creepy the way the, yeah. the veil is and, and all the candles and stuff. Although I pretty much knew away, knew right away that we were going to see Chekhov's candle knife at some point. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, that was, uh, I, yeah. But then, like but that. then also, I don't know. I think there's missed opportunities because they, there's that one part where he tells like, "Oh, this is how you kill vampires," but they don't really say that you kill vampires by stabbing them in the heart. Mm. So I wasn't sure if that. And then like, there's a the thing where she, she gets the thing, and I thought she was gonna yeah, cut the, 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 the head, the clay, the clay, the clay thing. I thought that was gonna happen too. And and I felt like the only the only head lopping we see is at the very beginning. <laughs> Um, so I, I felt like you just wasted a, a screenplay idea and you don't fulfill it. So it, I don't know. 
it felt like it was a uh, like it wanted like the the attention to detail to their not I wouldn't say attention to detail but just you know the uh, the time they spent with developing the characters uh, their chemistry it felt like it wanted to be a longer like series like she's even wearing like an Outlander t shirt at one point so I figured maybe I, know, that was, I saw that maybe it was going yeah, for yeah, that yeah. sort of vibe you know probably I don't know if anyone involved is is involved with it maybe but uh, it was it had that sort of vibe like they were maybe trying to stretch it up this felt more like a like what the Dark Shadows movie wanted to be or should mm. have been or, or started to be and then became, you know, what it what it was, Tim Burton. Because oh. uh, I, I would feel like, I feel like it, that was what that was aiming for. Uh, what What's the Walt's uh, real name? The, the actor. Thomas Doherty. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was he was okay. I just thought that um, he was playing the vampire thing to, like too obvious, a little too obvious, and by and by trying to be so subtle, I just felt like mm -hmm. he was playing the vampire. Like that was the one thing that didn't come up among her and her with her friend. It was like, oh, he's this, that, the other. Why didn't vampire ever come up? It's like he's clearly a vampire in the way he's like acting. <laughs> it, it's so sinister. He's it, you know trying to make him like debonair or whatever. I think if they had made him a little more, even a little more personable, you know, or something, it, it, he just came across as kind of creepy, mm -hmm. uh, which the the red flags just didn't go off for. Um, but. Well, Ultimately, she was, I, she was being seduced, so of course not. Yeah, but I mean, it was very quickly. It, it felt quick because I, you know, normally in the first half of the movie, she seemed a little more savvy, and then it was like, I guess the plot has to move this way. So he came and apologized. So right away, he's you know, he's he's seductive. So it's like, okay, now we got to move it on. But uh, yeah, I, I, it was, it was like I said, it was tolerable. It was fine. I thought she was she was good. I just didn't care for the end end. Uh, the the coda thing. The coda, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it was a little rough. I was like, oh no, they're trying didn't to do even, it. Didn't show. even accomplish anything. It was I mean, no, because if yeah, no, uh, no. Then. Well, uh, well, then, I, I don't know. But, well, <laughs> was it supposed to be funny? Was it supposed to be serious? I was really well. I, I think it was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Supposed to be. Well, first of all, it's like, how did she, she? All of her stuff, her passport, were all burning. <laughs> In the house or whatever, right? Yeah. Or, or and I was like, how in the world does she, she get just from there back away home from getting back or wherever? <laughs> like, she doesn't yeah. have money. She's not like she. The whole point of them talking about she's doesn't have any money. So how is she doing? I, I'm confused. Well, she, she got married, so she inherited everything that you know was an awful, disastrous fire. The, the, what but it was all. It? No, it wasn't like official. It was like I'll, it was a it was a blood oath. Yeah, and then they had no, like the, then they had scorpion. Well, that might be true too. They had scorpion just, from Mortal Kombat just, marrying them. So I'm just, oh, I'm that's just right. trying <laughs> trying to read some logic in here. She inherited the the entire fortune from Dracula. I don't. I think you'd have to. Where's the contract then? <laughs> they got burned up too. So who's going to deny it, right? I don't know. It doesn't work that way. I know it doesn't work that this way. It's frustrating me even more. Yeah. This is not helping. <laughs> no, the ending was entirely, it was almost, it was groaner for sure. Well, just the whole, and then the whole battle well, stuff was just bad. Well, I think this movie works better on paper or in concept than it does in, in, in whatever, in celluloid, right? If you want to put it that way. I don't, I, and I'm trying to figure out, is it, is it the editing that, where, where did this film go wrong? Is it, is it the editing? Is it the directing? Is I think the, the, the fight. Well, I agree with the choreography, the writing, the, the fighting stuff, because it, we've seen that a lot in vampire films of, of late, especially post like Matrix and stuff, where everything is like underworld. Under underworld, right? Exactly. Where? Yeah, but do you go with that, or do you? No, I would. I would much gothic, rather. Right? I would much rather see, you know, something a little more gothic, something a little more monstrous. This is more like you know, I was expecting some techno music to play. With some of the fight seats and maybe maybe the, the digital fire in the back. Oh man! <laughs> oh, that digital fire! Digital fire! Yeah, there's a close up over it, and then she's walking in the the fire. I'm like, yeah, that digital, digital ashes. Yeah. Like I was ready for it to just end right there and show the credits, and then the coda happened. I was like, nope, they just yeah. kind of ruined it. Oh, but, you know, oh, dumb stinger. Um, but but, just, but, I, but I'm serious. Like, what do you me... think? What do you think? Christopher made it fall apart. Is it one thing? <laughs> you know or... what? Um. I mean, you know, I will say I feel like I feel like there was an opportunity to tell an interesting story, you know. Um, I mean, conceptually with the three brides and but all I, that, I, I, mean, I thought that's interesting to take. Right? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I don't know. I, I think my. Uh, maybe maybe it's just my maybe just the way as a filmmaker and as somebody who writes stories, I just felt like what they did to her character was a disservice to her character. Cause she felt very throughout the whole movie. She felt very helpless 
you know, she wasn't. And I feel like, I feel like they give, you know, in the very beginning, she's making crack. She's, you know, she, she has more of an attitude. And then at some point she's not really, she's not really fighting back. She's not really doing anything until maybe towards the end, you know? Um, and it, th there was an interesting premise here, but then, and then everything kind of, th then everything kind of switches over quickly. You know, one minute the guy's wooing her, the next minute it's like, okay. And then she's like, and then, th then there's like one part where he has to explain to her that I'm a vampire. <laughs> Which, I don't know, I feel like everybody in the world, I don't know, it just felt, it's like, why? No, yeah. Well, I don't know, I don't know. It's like, you know, and, and you can put all your Nina Harker, Mina Harker <laughs> references or whatever. Jonathan Harker, yeah. annoyed me. Um, I mean, it was, I mean, it was, actually, I, I kind of knew that whole part was yeah it was in the trailer it was in the trailer so um, well i didn't know that i didn't know that i didn't know the dracula element of it until they said you know hey we're at carfax abbey and I, it was like a, a like a body switch i was like wait what? i know it was like oh, <laughs> like oh, that's really? that's not a that's not one of those references that just goes over your head that's that's me remembering uh keanu reeves saying I brought him here to carfax abbey <laughs> <laughs> oh that's, really that's okay cool. i just yeah, kept yeah. thinking of like the I That's... was being a stupid American, like I kept thinking Carfax. You mean like the, <laughs> the side Carfax? No, this is um, this new no, home. You know? Yes, this is. A, yeah. I I think it wanted to be ready or not at the end, right? It wanted to be a lot of things, but yeah, yeah I think well, they definitely use that as a template. I think. Well, and, and I think that's the problem because. Ready or not, I think works extremely well for the story it's telling, mm -hmm. and it's one of my favorite films. You know, the last few years, yeah. And that, and the strength is in the female character, the bride character, mm -hmm. who finds ways to fight back. And I think in this one, it it falls back to old eighties, you know, damsel in distress elements where she's or maybe helpless. even further back. Yeah, it's good. yeah, yeah it's and, and she's so thing. helpless throughout, and it just annoyed me. It's like. And granted, yeah, you know, you don't normally have to have every female character I get in a movie because every, you know, it needs to be realistic. Because there's, you know, we all, I mean, there's, there's going to be times where people are going to cower under a bed. But she was like doing that so much, or, no, or, no. and it just, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. But I, I will say, I like when they trapped her in the coffin. You know, I fell for her. You know, good, I mean, yeah. so I think there was points, but I don't know. I just felt like. Even when she's escaping, she's asking questions and she's not really, hmm. she's not doing anything to fight back or do anything, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, they even had the guy chasing her with a, uh, like a cleaver and they didn't even <laughs> do anything with that, you know? But there's like so many opportunities where she could have fought back or gotten a weapon or do different things. And there was not that. She just always is cowering the majority of the time until the very end when she has that sort of weird epiphany where the, you know, the, She's the vision of the girl, like, oh yeah. That. Um, so no, what were you about to say, Brian? No, I was just gonna say, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, it, it felt believable enough. I mean, she's in a weird situation. She just saw the woman get murdered. I don't think she's gonna jump into hero mode right away. You know, the woman gets murdered and drained of her blood right in front of her. It's all kind of weird. Um, I knew it was gonna end up her having to, you know, fight back as of hey, hey, little, little cat there. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought that. I, I do understand what you're saying, though. It, it kind of reminded me, what you're saying reminds me of, like, remember Swamp Thing with Adrian Barbo, where mm. she's this badass hero in the first half of the movie, and then by the end, she's really just the damsel in distress in the, in the white dress, and I was just like, what happened there? Like, if you watch that movie, it's like apples and oranges with her character, but uh, yeah, it's, it's I was, like I said, I was I was fine with it. I, I think she reacted realistically when, you know, she's there. And I mean, they were scary already from the masks, like you yeah. walk into a room with a bunch of people wearing masks. That was, that was well, a little crazy. I, I, I mean, that, I think the scene in the dinner scene, yeah, I think that kind of reaction is fine. I'm just talking about other parts of it where she could have done a little bit more as her character because her character is portrayed as this independent woman that doesn't need anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, she's even she's even talking smack to the butler when she meets him. <laughs> That's right. I, I so like she that has, I she like has that an scene. attitude, but then I feel like that attitude kind of goes away to where she's just like... Mm not doing anything you know and i, I feel like i kind of wanted her to fight back a whole lot more and not to have to wait until she becomes like buffy the vampire slayer at the very yeah. end you yeah know? they did they wanted to go for that transformation if you will air quotes but they uh 
yeah, they they started off strong as a strong character that got weaker and then transformed into you know very or not character. But let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, one to five. <laughs> Guess where some of these are going to land, and our favorite scene, Brian, you sir. Oh, I start. Uh, I'm gonna give it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna give it a f- three uh, point. Generous, generous. Uh, a, a three point two five, I guess. Is that okay? Uh, you know, I I appreciated the. I liked the actress. I thought she was really good. Uh, the main vampire actor was fine. Uh, just a little on the creepy side. Um, I did like the sort of dark shadows gothic setup of that. I feel like we don't see enough of that, and a lot of films don't take the time with that. Uh, I just maybe had to knock a few points off because of the the, the recurring underworld uh, vampire fighting that I'm kind of tired of seeing. Uh, favorite scene? I guess I would say my favorite scene was probably the dinner scene, the dinner table scene, the the, the uh, we're married uh, type of scene where it's just like uh, the eyes wide shut masks at the table and the maid <laughs> getting it, everything about that was just sort of like, okay, this is where you get up and, and don't stick around or, you know, you just, well, she tried. <laughs> right. Right. But I mean, yeah, for, for first walking in, it's like, this is this, this tradition. I, I'm pretty sure that's a tradition that still goes on somewhere, but uh, yeah, it, it's, they shot it. I thought they did it pretty, pretty well. And I liked it, but that's all it's getting as a score. That's all it's getting. That's it. Let's see what happens here. Christopher G. Moore, your final thoughts, your score, your favorite scene. Put your put your bets your bets in now. <laughs> um, you know, you know what I'm gonna say. I I think the actress is a good actress. I think a lot of the problems had to do with the dialogue of the script. You know, because there's sure. some really really bad. There's really bad pieces of dialogue. I think I rolled my eyes. There's one part where he's like. So what are the three rules? Like eat, pray, or love? And it's like, oh, shut up. Um, but uh, it has its moments. Um, and I kind of would have lo- loved the underworld stuff if they'd actually had good choreography, which they did. And there's a lot of stuff that's very mishandled when it comes to the cinematography, when it comes to the editing, when it comes to editing action. Um when it comes to the use of shots and how those correlate, and when it comes to editing, these, uh, when these it are comes all that to go with the making a movie, no, no, like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you had to pick, pick between ready or not, this is not. Um, uh, and if you have to compare it to other things, those other things are going to be better. Um, so yeah, a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of things that I did not like or enjoy or tolerate it frustrated me um including your theater experience itself right yeah that just compounded the whole situation made it even more made me more insufferable (laughs) i was like so huffing i was like i don't care if there's probably some in credit sequence i'm leaving this theater (laughs) because <laughs> uh, i feel like there was people making it out behind me at one point because i got bored of the film too <laughs> i didn't have anybody to make out with just me um so um invitation is a party i don't want to go back to nah, um, i'm gonna use that i will i'm sure they're <laughs> gonna put that on the blu-ray not um they're just gonna I'm put it's a party given an a two. A two. I'm, I'm giving it a two. I it's, lost my bet. I was expecting less. <laughs> I, I, I figured a two. I, 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 I mean, you know, I, I mean, there are elements. I will say this is not a total piece of trash. <laughs> yeah. The, the, sure. I mean, there, there's, I mean, there's, I mean, gra- granted, yeah, yeah. Even the stuff that doesn't make any sense filmmaking wise or cinematography, <laughs> it's shot well. It's just, you know, you don't put all those shots together back and forth like that when you're telling a story you use shots to build a certain element and to go back and forth it just seemed like oh it just seems somebody like oh let's do these as cool these are cool shots but then it doesn't work editing wise you know when, when, when you placement of music or something it, it, yeah when it comes yeah. to you know like the whole thing cafe scene where people are placed on a certain part of the screen and then you go to the wide and then you go back to these weird shots and then the other shots and i just like they had all these multiple shots to where it felt like they didn't know what they were shooting they just thought it was cool and then you put it together and it's just like <laughs> yep. 
Yep. What is happening here? So it's like there's somebody on drugs. Um, but yeah, the dialogue's bad in parts, but there's I mean, there's some nice things and there's some there's, you know, including it, your favorite scene, <sighs> which is. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm hit, I'm hit up before I get myself in more trouble. Um, I'll say, I'll say the um, the spa scene mm. because yeah. because of the tension that's created in that scene. Mm -hmm. As much as I knew exactly what they were doing and where it was going, it still got me because of just how uh, when it came to you know the one character like trying to get on the girl's nerves and then you knew at some point you know somebody's finger is gonna hit <laughs> hurt or bloody and then how it kind of ends it kind of like spells out okay these people are not her and also that one girl kind of reminded me of the silent hills woman <laughs> the big tall silent Hills. Oh woman my God. Reason. <laughs> so i kept thinking I, I feel like this film had like all these different things from different properties that are so much better than what's in this <laughs> film. <laughs> so uh yeah so i'll say that that's probably my favorite scene so i it, it's not a totally horrible movie it's just i think all the elements the mostly horrible together movie. yeah <laughs> it's like i watch all these baking shows and it's like when you actually put a whole thing of salt <laughs> It just ruins all the good stuff that's in it and oh makes God, it like hilarious. not great makes it not tasteable. So that's hilarious. Too much salt in this movie. All right. Um I I I I think I enjoyed this movie a little bit more than you guys did, I believe so. Uh but I, I can't argue that it's a good movie because it is it's a it is a little dull. You know, it doesn't have enough snap to it. It um I did like the chemistry between our our leads. Um, and I do, I don't, did nobody else have a new Duke here vibe from our, our well, lead? Um, I kept hearing people comparing him to like young Sean Connery. Um, I just kept looking at him as like, he's a vampire. I mean, he did. He <laughs> like definitely, it, when his ears even look pointy. Um, <laughs> like how many years ago from 85 with Jerry Dandridge just being, hey, I'm Jerry Dandridge to this guy. Yes. I, I know, yeah, there you go. I am a human. <laughs> <laughs> uh so and i to me i i really once they got to the new carpet abbey i love the gothic feel of the setting mm -hmm. and it made me uh really nostalgic for hammer films and wanting to have more you know of that vibe to films and i'm hey i'm hoping we get some of that um at some point um but in the end, it, it it just it does. It makes some weird decisions. It has some awkward editing and uh, choreography. Yeah, the the fight scenes are not the best, and uh, it it kind of neuters our villain at the same time. You know, really quickly. Um, I I mean, I know what they were going after, and I could if I were reading the script, I could see it. But I don't think they got it. I think something got lost between the page and the screen, and um, some of it got captured. But it's inconsistent. So, and that might be the best way to describe this film. It's just inconsistent. Um, so I'm I'm going to give it a three because I think it's just for me it's just barely above average. Which I'm surprised because Brian, I thought I liked it more than you, but based on the score, you like it more than I do. So that's kind of strange. Um, and my favorite scene, um, I, I'm tempted to go with the scene in the bed when. The thing is trying to get through the, but it, it ended so funny. Like you said, she hopped underneath the bed. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of stupid. Um, so it kind of ruined that from being the best. Uh, so I'm, I, what do I want to go with? Um, I think I want to go with the, the, um, the first party they have outside when we get introduced to the, the other two brides, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I like the conversation and the, um, the menace. I, I felt there was a little bit of mess. These two characters come in, and they're and they're different, right? They're uh, and they play off each other and, and as as different characters, but they both feel on the same side of being different characters, right? You know, they they're not on her side, even though one feels like they might could be, right? Um, I don't know. I just really like that 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 whole scene, and then when he shows up, I I I felt it was really. It was establishing, um, you know, the different families, the different fields and everything. And, and that, I, I don't know. I, w I was into it there for a short bit. <laughs> we'll go with that. 
I don't feel like I was very convincing with that I explanation. I, I mean, like, I mean, the, again, the, there was there was elements that if they'd done it more like that, it would have worked. Like, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I will say, like, when she's in bed and she sees like like somebody sitting in that chair. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, but the visual of that was very effective as she turns the light on, you know, yep. or even even little crawling on top of the canopy type thing. Uh, that was effective, but then you have the whole thing in the library stuff that just looks stupid. Yeah. And, and then it oh, being, we lost Brian. Oh no, it ended up being very lost, like like a bad version of Lost Boys, but not as kind of did. Yeah, it kind of did. <clears throat> yeah, Brian just said, "I'm out of here, man." <laughs> uh, Sorry, Wi-Fi went out. <laughs> like I'm tired of Chris I'm talking tired, smack uh, about I'm this. All right, well let's go ahead and uh, get out of here. So that's our review for the invitation. <laughs> We, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, to my, to my candy love, man exit. Yes, we'd love to, <laughs> love to hear your comments down below. Uh, I just I, say I, Brian's name five times yes, and leaves the podcast. Just, he just leaves. He doesn't come. He doesn't come uh, I am curious to see if any of our listeners actually went to see this movie. Well, some people went to see it considering it was. It was number one with seven number million dollars. Seven nobody million, went to nobody went to the theater. It, 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 yeah, the guy who directed the Fury Road <laughs> George. only made like two point one million for uh, like a sixty wow. million budget. Wow, yeah. I didn't even know I didn't even realize it came out until after I found out this one. Well, I think everybody because I think that they moved it up, right? Mm. It, it was supposed to come out a little bit later, but yeah, yeah there I was think, like nobody I think that's a big problem with that. I think the the Which promotion really on that was terrible. It looked, you know, I had six but, other people in my theater. Yeah, but this, this, <laughs> this, 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 these two weekends, the end of August and first September, have always been, you know, bad weeks. Really? Um, it's August. Yeah. It should be. No, it's, it? uh, it's summer. At the end of summer, everybody's going off on the last minute vacations and stuff and doing summer yeah. things. And then, uh, but they're to, I mean, they're literally combating it with uh, National Cinema Day on Saturday oh. this weekend, um, where you can get go to a theater most theaters are allowing you to get three dollar tickets for any showing any any types so, funny it's interesting yeah so anyway let's 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 get out of here guys thank you christopher right. thank you brian for joining me it was a lot of fun all right good night oh, good night <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> look, get me out of here have, have a good night <laughs> <laughs>